Hey and welcome back to Notion for Teachers. I'm Andrew and it's my mission to support you in building and maintaining a system in Notion which reduces your uh, zero and low value admin time as much as possible whilst giving back you time for yourself and for the students you teach. What I'd like to talk to you about today is my lesson planning dashboard. Uh, this lesson plan database, sorry, this uh, database is one of the biggest that I have. It probably is the, the biggest database that I currently have in Notion. Um, and in here, I'll show you it very, very soon, but I track uh, all the lessons that I'm teaching. I pull up into this database from my topics database, any of the topics and resources that I'm going to need for, the, for those particular lessons. Uh, I manage my homeworks in this database and I manage any sort of uh, behavior or discipline issues. I keep a running record in this database of all those different factors and all those different bits of uh, teaching. The great thing with Notion is that yes, the, the lesson planning database is an enormous database, there's no doubt about it, but um, I can set Notion up so that I can only view certain bits of it depending on what phase of the week that I'm on uh, and what I'm wanting to do in that lesson. So if I'm in a lesson, for example, I'm going to want to see what topic I'm teaching that day. I'm going to want to be able to enter uh, any sort of behavior information or discipline tracking. Uh, but maybe I'm not so interested in homeworks, uh, homework marking that day and homework scores because I'm not going to be marking homeworks in the lesson while homeworks are tracked within this database, I don't necessarily need to view them all uh, every time. So Notion gives me that option that I can set up my different dashboards, different views of databases, so that I'm only seeing the bits that I absolutely need and want to see at that particular time. And I'll show you what that means as we go on through the video series. So let's dive right in now to the lesson planning database so that you can see how I've got this set up Okay, so just to show you the, the route that I would typically access the, the dashboards which use the lesson planning the database. So I'm coming in, I'm arriving in, in the class, ready to teach a lesson. I'll be coming in straight in my Google Calendar for that day. What's my lesson? Okay, it's two o'clock, five past two. I'm teaching further maths to lower sixth. So I'm going to click on the uh, invite in the calendar. And I've got a link inserted in there. I'm going to click on that link. And that link is going to take me straight to that class's dashboard. Uh, and as I come down here, what I'm seeing is that I have various uh, various views on this period by period planner. And um, so it, it shows here in a cert one certain view of certain things I need to remember every single lesson. It also displays down here where with a different view, different cut, different selection of columns from the same period by period planner database, um, which shows me this is more uh, what I'm teaching topic wise and the resources that I might be using for those lessons. Then on further down into my period by period planner for homeworks. So what homework have I set recently? What homework will I be setting in the next week? Uh, and then another view of that spreadsheet, just with more lessons displayed, just so maybe when I'm doing some longer term planning, I can come in here and have a look at everything in this case, which every single lesson for this group. So let's go into this period by period planner, which is what I would consider to be my lesson. And here we can see there are a number of views in the lesson planning dashboard. OK, so if we go to today, today is the 11th of November. So you can see here that for that period, starting at five past two, which is period six, on Thursday, the 11th of November, I would call that year period 432. So my system is to give every single school period in the whole school year a different number. Start at period one, going the whole way up to periods well into the thousands, and I think it's about 1300 periods in the school year and every single period whether it's a free period or a top period or a departmental meeting or sports afternoon gets a separate period number 
And I just find that's a good way to very quickly to be able to order all the periods in the school year by that period number. So working across the database still just for this lesson, period six, teaching further maths. Uh, the topic for that lesson was AS for the maths core pure chapter three series. And this is this particular column is a lookup is referenced to the um, topics database, which will be the subject of a separate video. I'll do the topics database in a separate video. Uh, so that's my way then I know when I'm teaching that lesson, I can come in very quickly look at what the topic is that I'm teaching that lesson and what the subtopic of that bigger topic is. If I have it broken down into subtopics in my topics database, which I don't for that particular topic. But that's maybe something to build out in future. You can see for other classes for 4C period five today, for example, the subtopic was measuring spread. And I had a, uh, that was the topic. And then I had a select resources for that lesson already hooked in and selected for that particular row in the, in the spreadsheet or in the database. Just as we go across my lesson plan in database then, so one thing I want to track is when I've dropped notes and resources into the um, into Teams so that students aren't in the lesson can access it. So but that's not been happening so much recently with fewer students off with COVID. When it was happening, certainly before half term, I want to keep a quick record, a quick hyperlink to that um, notification in Teams. And as we continue across, uh, a few columns here where I can track my retrieval practice. So retrieving some sort of learning from a month ago, from a few weeks ago, and from the last lesson. Um, not been doing that so much recently, but there is, that was the intention with those columns and uh, Notion would certainly facilitate me in, in achieving that. Uh, an old column I used to do, the topics, list all the topics in this database in this column but what i found was it was much better to have a separate database of all the topics so i started to gradually shift those out of this particular database and into their own separate topics database so we're looking in then recorded just tracking the month the week and the particular day of the month here uh, and then a, a link from this database into the stakeholders database. Just if I want all my information relating to further maths, lower LB in one place, then I have that in the stakeholders database. And each class has its own page in the stakeholders database where I keep all the relevant information relating to that class in one place. Uh, when I've set a homework, all homeworks are tracked in this database. So if I've set a homework today, as for example, class 3CM on the Today, set them a homework, which is linked here. And I've got the link stored in this database so I can very quickly navigate to that um, homework in the homework um, the system that we use at our school for communicating what the homework is and the due dates and things. But all those due dates are then tracked in here in this spreadsheet for every period that I'm taught if I'm setting a homework for that period. Um, and moving further across, so these are still related to homework. So if I'm planning on not setting a homework or I am planning on setting it, I can tick the relevant boxes so that that particular row displays in other, so I can set a filter according to the ticked boxes in this column so that that particular row then displays or doesn't display in a relevant view of the spreadsheet if I want to view information about the homeworks. Once I've marked the homework, I'll tick it. Obviously, I'll need to tick it if it's been set. Uh, very useful column here is that I can track here whether students happened to be late for a lesson. So if I'm doing something, if it's I've been teaching in my example class, for example, 
and Hermione was laying it. Well, I can very quickly track that in here. The beauty of that then is that if Hermione, this is really useful because if Hermione happened to be late for a few lessons in a row and I had tracked her as such, where's Hermione at? So she's late a few lessons in a row like this, then this is the real value. This is super valuable for me for parents evening, I think. If Hermione was late for like three lessons this week, and I want to be able to quickly track that. Look, it's very, very quick to record that. In there, I can just go in, click on Hermione's profile. It shows me that in here, that Hermione was, because this particular row in her profile shows me where she was late. And it shows me she was late on the 12th. She was late for class twice on the 12th and once on the 13th of November. Just by me going in and ticking that option or selecting her name in this late columns. That's how Notion references work. And I could do the same if I'm speaking to students at the end or if they're missing equipment or if I need to award merits. I want to quickly track if I'm going to award a merit here. I'll drop it into this database and but i won't necessarily i can then that's my way i can view all the awarded merits at the end of the day and see who i do or do not need to add into the centralized uh, mis for our school and a few other things i need to remember in lessons is pink sheets and taking the register not been very good over the last day or two so i'm obviously i can in tracking that i can see that i need to improve my record there. So that is the lesson planning database, dash database, very, very big database full of information relating to every single one of the periods where I'm teaching. Of course, with Notion, if I scroll right up to the top, we can create filters just to show us certain classes, for example. And here we have all of FMLB's lessons. And that is created just by telling us that we want the detail column to show us only FMLB. And we want it to, that page to be sorted. Full data ascending is probably the one you're going to go for. You're going to want to what, see all your lessons in order that they're going to be taught. And then tomorrow, maybe if I'm doing some planning for this group, I can come to this view. I can scroll down here and I can see right starting from now i need to drop in lots of resources if it's a resource heavy group with this one in particular i have my notes that i just teach off so it's not so resource heavy but certainly a group like maybe 4c for example much more resource heavy so i've got worksheets and lesson plans and here for example tomorrow yep tomorrow going in teaching class 4c and i'm going to teach cumulative frequency tomorrow so there i've linked to the cumulative frequency um, resources and i've got a document there of cumulative frequency questions which i want to give to this class tomorrow thank you very much dr frost and there it is linked at your fingertips Let's have a quick look how that shows up because you're not going to come into this view during a lesson. But tomorrow, all I will do is be I will go in and teach from 4C. I'll click there on 4C, it will bring up 4C's dashboard, and I will have I'll go down to lesson last today next. And there we have it, that cumulative frequency questions document against the correct date. So in that lesson, tomorrow, I'll just come in, I'll be able to click there. That's always going to display because this view of the period by period planner, which is that lesson planning dashboard, that period by period view, is always set to show me everything where the detail is 4C, class 4C, and that lesson lies within one week ago and up to one week from now. 
so it's in that nice tight window. I find this is better showing a bit of a range of the um, lessons. So just if you get a bit behind in one lesson or a bit ahead in one lesson, you can very quickly see what you had, what you need to get caught up on from, from the last lesson and what you did over the last week, which can sometimes be relevant in, in that lesson. And you maybe want to have that information slightly more conveniently to your fingertips. Well, this allows us to do that. And the other, yeah, there's quite a few columns there that I have displayed, which I very rarely use. The real one that I use for me is when I'm in that lesson tomorrow, 12th of November, I can come in there and click on cumulant frequency. There's the document I need to get displayed on the front of the board. And it just so happens that I may have printed that off for the students as well. Otherwise, that is my summary of the lesson planning dashboard. I hope that was really useful. Any questions, pop them in the comments. And I will very much look forward to getting back to you very, very soon. So that's your lesson planning database. So as I said at the start, big, enormous database. But I think that if it wasn't that big, it would just be split into three or four separate smaller databases, which I then want to be linking some way. So it makes sense to me to have them all connected up together. Um, and just have one big database. But remember that I can filter that database to only show me the key bits of information I wanna have at my fingertips at any given time in the week. So maybe I'm sat back, uh, back at home or something on the weekend doing some planning. I can view the information that I need to have at my fingertips at that stage of the week. Where, and that's gonna be different to the information I wanna have while I'm actually teaching a lesson. And I can set uh, notion up to show me show me those key bits that i want to see at that particular time you've been watching notion for teachers i'm andrew hit subscribe and the bell icon and you will be notified when i'm dropping new videos at least every week uh, i hope you're having a, a great week yourselves and look forward to speaking to you again soon thanks for watching